Now, I'm sure uh, we've all now heard of the post office scandal, but are HMRC next in line? Campaigners and MPs are calling for an inquiry into contractor loan schemes, which have left thousands of workers who signed up for them facing life-destroying tax bills and been linked to several suicides. The Treasury Committee wrote to HMRC requesting more information on its approach to these schemes, but campaigners say that a letter is simply a tick-box exercise and that HMRC is airbrushing the details. Uh, a little while ago, I spoke to Tory MP Greg Smith, co-chair of the Loan Charge All-Party Parliamentary Group, and asked him to explain what the contractor loan schemes were and how many people were caught up in them. So it was a piece of uh, legislation in 2016 that essentially turned the tax tables on a lot of people and made individuals liable for amounts of taxation that their employer or the promoter of these loan schemes should have actually paid themselves. And it's led to an incredible level of hardship for around 60,000 people in the United Kingdom who find themselves with bills that they just can't afford to pay, tax that someone else should have paid, uh, where they were left in a situation, uh, they'd taken professional advice, they had listened to advisors that probably any of us would uh, listen to, professional people who said these schemes were legitimate, and turns out they weren't. And why would individuals have been made responsible for payments that should have been made by employers? I mean, it seems a strange piece of legislation, Mm. if you don't mind me saying. It it, it is. It's a classic bit of HMRC going for the low-hanging fruit because the the tax man knows that going off an individual rather than a larger entity is is potentially the easier way to do it. But it's totally taken out uh, all humanity. Uh, from the process, there are actually some examples. I've I've heard evidence from victims of the loan charge where they break down to tears very easily. They talk about having lost their homes, lost their marriages over the stress uh, involved in it. Some people are being asked to pay more than they ever earned within a particular contract. It, the whole thing needs turning on its head, properly reviewing. Victims need talking to, not just HMRCs, view of the world so that we can actually get to the bottom of how to get to a fair settlement on these taxation affairs. That's fundamentally what people are asking for, a fair settlement. Greg, do you think that there's a a need for better transparency with HMRC? Because uh, on the face of it, that sounds like a pretty cynical approach. We know why you'd go after individuals rather than companies, because individuals have got less access to justice, can't afford the legal uh, bills, perhaps, and and so on. And, uh, you know, having been through the whole sort of freelancers battle at the the BBC Mm. when I was there, you know, I know only too well how draconian uh, they can Mm. be and how difficult it can be to, to, to... find fair solutions. And this seems to be yet another example of that. It it absolutely is. In fact, the the battles that freelancers have had with things like IR35 are actually inextricably linked to the loan charge issue because you're essentially uh, talking about the same people. Uh, Predominantly, it was freelancers. Predominantly, it was people working for umbrella companies that that, that got suckered in uh, by the disguised remuneration schemes that the loan charge sought to to claw back from. We do need transparency. And what we need is we need to uh, undercover, I guess, uh, uncover the the, the, the truth that actually sits at the heart of each and every one of the people affected. We, We know you said in your introduction, 10 people have tragically come to that most terrible conclusion to take their own lives over this loan charge Uh, victims. And I'm scared that there's going to be an 11th and a 12th and a 13th, and it's going to keep going until we can actually get HMRC to put their hands up and say, we didn't get this right. We didn't fix this in the way that it should have been fixed and come up with a a human and fair settlement to everybody uh, that is tied up with the loan charge. And do you think as well, I mean, uh, you know, having been a part of, of, of as I said, that whole freelance um, mm. debacle, um, I, you know, when Jeremy Hunt said in the recent budget, you know, that he was going to empower HMRC to 
take back, you know, to get money off people uh, who owe tax. Um, mm. it, it put a shudder down my spine because instantly it actually suggests again that same approach, uh, which puts people really in 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 danger and 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 they have no defence against it. Uh, yeah, I, look, I don't think anybody is arguing against people paying their tax. Nobody of course is not. arguing no, no. that people shouldn't pay their tax. What we're arguing for is a system that is transparent and that is fair. And it can never be fair that someone is being asked to pay more than they ever earned in a contract back to the, the tax man through the loan charge. That, that just isn't right. People shouldn't be losing their homes over this. People shouldn't be in that terrible situation where actually too often they're frightened to go to HMRC to try and negotiate because they know that HMRC are just going to come down on them like a ton of bricks. That's not how the system should work. And how many people uh, now, would you say, are in the situation of still owing money to HMRC or, or still being chased by HMRC for those monies? The exact figure is unknown because there isn't a complete picture. Um, we believe there to be around 60,000 people caught up by the loan charge in the United Kingdom. That number could, though, be significantly higher because there is a possibility there are a lot more people out there that haven't actually come forward yet, started to negotiate with HMRC, uh, let their stories be known to the loan charge action group or the all-party group on the loan charge and taxpayer fairness. So it, it's not a knowable figure at the moment, but 60,000 is the, is the number we're at that we know about. And what do you want government to do? What would you like to, to see happen? I mean, do you want these 60,000 people to be entirely exonerated or, or how, how does it get resolved? Uh, no, no, I don't think you can just write it off. Uh, what we have to do is, is HMRC, uh, in conjunction with the Treasury, need to come forward. They need to be transparent about their dealings with everybody on the loan charge so far. We actually need an inquiry that doesn't just take HMRC's word for it in the way the Morse Review did, but actually talks to the victims, talks to real people that are caught up in this, losing their homes, losing their families, uh, losing their entire livelihoods with amounts of debt that, that you know, they simply can't afford to pay. And then we need to come back with a new scheme that looks at a fair ask and a fair settlement uh, so that uh, those that were misled by advisors putting them into these uh, disguised remuneration schemes can pay a, a fair amount that's actually reflective of what, what they should have paid in the first place. And of course, you know, the majority of freelancers, if you will, or sole traders or mm. you know, people working uh, in that way tend to be people not in show business or whatever, but at the <laughs> lowest margins of, of pay, don't they? Uh, yeah, look, I, I'm a huge fan of the self-employed, of freelancers. I think they're some of our best entrepreneurs as well as some of the hardest workers in the United uh, Kingdom. So, and actually, if you look back to our recovery after the 2008 uh, economic crash, between 2010 and 2016, the growth in self-employment was absolutely enormous. Uh, and you can contribute quite a lot of our economic recovery and success and regaining of the British entrepreneurial spirit to people uh, setting up as freelancers and self-employed. So I want to encourage people to do that. But so long as nightmare scenarios like this happen, I can understand why some people hesitate and, and don't do that. But our economy needs them. And just finally then, would you like to see the rules around how uh, freelancers and sole traders and so mm -hmm. on uh, pay tax changed and perhaps made clearer? I think there does have to be some simplicity put into the the system. Personally, I think the biggest barrier remains IR35. I understand why IR35 was introduced, but the way it was introduced and the enforcement of it just doesn't work for a lot of freelancers. It isn't, it isn't really that aware of how the real world operates, if I can put it uh, like that. And, and it is stopping people... You know, taking on good contracts and, and helping you know, grow their own uh, finances as well as the national economy. So I think IR35 reform needs to come first and then the taxation of the self-employed. We do need to have another look at that and ensure that we are properly reflecting the fact that the self-employed don't get holiday entitlements or 
uh, private pensions unless they set them up themselves or any of the other things that those who pay PAYE get and that uh, rewards entrepreneurialism in the tax system rather than uh, this case, which simply punishes it. Well, that was Conservative MP Greg Smith. Have you found yourself at the sharp end of a new tax ruling or judgment or in any way uh, had a, an experience related to this case? Do let us know. Uh, WhatsApp us on 0333 003 2353. Always very, very happy to hear from our listeners. Now, if you're a big fan of 